All right, I think we can go ahead here. Um, I'm still getting through this, but I want to go ahead and turn it over to uh, media here. Uh, guys, Matt doesn't have anything to open with, so uh, we'll turn it over for questions right now. Hey, Matt, Christian from Fox 46 here. Um, how's camp been so far for you, and uh, what's your relationship like so far with uh, Teddy Bridgewater? Camp's been good so far. Um, I mean, the first week is a little different with just the testing and virtual meetings, but being in the building's good. And, and uh, it's been great to get to know him and, and work with him and, you know, met him a little bit over the uh, spring you know, virtually and then um, developing that relationship. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Matt, what can you tell us about Russell Okun? We haven't had a chance to get to know him yet. Just getting to see that guy in the building, what's he like? Yeah, Russ is a Russ is a great guy. I've known him for um, I think about five years now. Um, we played together, and I think that was 2016. But a great guy, very good, very good player, um, physical presence, great uh, locker room guy, great, great leader. Um, great friend to me, and uh, I'm excited to have him around. Matt, hey, uh, Steve Reed from the Associated Press. Um, what can you tell us about about Teddy? Uh, you know, I guess you know Matt Rule and Marty Herney. These guys all raved about his natural leadership. I guess. What What do you notice? I know you haven't spent a lot of time, but what, what jumps out at you about? Him? Yeah, I mean he he's a uh, he's very. Um, He's a reassuring presence, um, very calm and collected and just rolling. He's, he's sharp. He's, he's moving quick, um, commanding the huddle. Um, I mean, I don't, what, is it, what else is there? He's, he's uh, I'm trying to think. We've been, everything's been going great so far. You know, we've, we've got to or, uh, just the little bit we were working together, uh, working fast in the huddle, and uh, he's been doing great. Matt, I was wondering, you've got a couple guys, you know, you've worked, you know, Russell came up, but you've got a couple guys on that offensive line you worked with back in Denver. What is that like for you kind of getting back with people you've played with before like that? Yeah, it's an interesting deal. The longer you've played, the more you kind of, it's kind of like a uh, reunion almost because I, I was drafted with Schofield and, and then played with Russell and, um, it's good to see them again. You know, I've, I've known, I've known Mike, Michael for a long time and Russell for a long time. And um, even though we have a new group and, and um, you know, normally there'd be this big gelling period. Well, some of these guys I've already played with. So it's almost like you get a jump start on that, which is not, which is nice. Matt, uh, you sort of just brought this up, but you know, when it comes to an offensive line and gelling, what is it going to take in order for that to happen, especially considering the limited amount of practice time you guys have? Yeah, I mean, it's – and so, like I said, I've played with, with Michael and, and Russell in the past, so I feel like we get a jump start there. But, I mean, to start clear back in virtual meetings, we can't get those practice reps, so it's actually communication. So, in every play, you know, Coach Meyer will bring up a play and we'll talk about something, and then we'll jump in, whether it's me and, and John or, or me and Dennis or me and whoever, we'll jump in and we're like, hey, this is what I'm thinking here. This is my footwork. So we've got to you've got to over you've got to be very um, particular with your with your words and what you're gonna do because we we missed out on all those reps in the spring so you have to be able to visualize it and communicate and then translate that over to the field so we can kind of hopefully you know skip some of those steps that we would normally have done in the spring. Hey, man. ESPN.com. Um, obviously, there's some good special I mean, talent with Christian McCaffrey and Teddy and DJ Moore. Seems a lot of what this offense will do rides on the offensive line and how it gels. What have you seen out of the pieces they put together? Letting Trey Turner go, how you feel about that? That makes you feel like this offensive line can. So, sorry, will you uh, repeat that question a little bit? You're glitching in and out. Yeah, you, uh, the offensive line seems to be the biggest question of the offense because you know you've got Christian and DJ and Teddy. 
they let Trey Turner go from the offensive line. The pieces they melded around you with Russell, what do you feel like this offensive line, uh, the potential of it is, what you've seen so far? Hey, I think we've got a good group. Um, we got a great room. Guys are guys are getting along well. And, uh, you know, we're going to be physical. We've got a lot of, of strong, big dudes that can move. And, uh, you know, we're, we're day two here. So I can't tell you what our what our offensive identity is going to be, but you know we got a we got a, a group that's that's uh, that's working hard and and we're ready to roll. We're ready to uh, to go out there and and dominate. Matt, uh, from a physical standpoint, last off season, obviously you were still kind of dealing with the injury. Do you feel you're you're back to a hundred percent? Do you feel like you were able to get even through quarantine and all the COVID? kind of stuff were you able to keep up with your workouts and things uh, during the offseason what was that like yeah um I'm feeling great um it's a lot different having an offseason where you're not rehabbing you're actually able to to work out and then and then when COVID happened um yeah so I was back in Idaho when it when you know things were closing down and um just kind of doing like backyard workouts for a while but made it happen until until was able to uh I got back out to Charlotte in March and uh was able to kind of piece together a weight room over the over the spring and summer and and was able to do good workouts you know the Panthers are still uh coach Scott was sending us workouts and was able to get after just finding like random parks to go run at and um yeah I feel like I'm in pretty good shape pretty dang good shape and and ready to roll Matt, Marty was talking to us yesterday about just how he's very confident in the protocols that have been set up at the stadium. As an offensive lineman, though, do you does it give you any pause about just kind of what the trenches are going to be like from a COVID and a health perspective? Um, you know, and I, I'm not a scientist. And honestly, I haven't kept up to, to, to date on the, um, like, the latest latest stuff that, that, that are that – are, doctors and and people are coming out with but you know obviously we're not going to be able to avoid contact we're not going to be able to avoid breathing on each other but you know we every team's put these protocols in all the the contact tracing and the and we're getting tested every day and i i have faith and trust in the system that that we're doing right now and that you know we're not good the the system is designed so that no one that's on the field is has COVID to pass to each other. So I have, I have faith in that. And, and it's just the, the reality we live in. And um, I'm, I'm not, don't want to say like, I'm not worried about it, but there's, there's not much more we can do, I think. So I'm, I'm more than willing to play in that. Hey Matt, uh, Jason Huber, WFNZ. Last year, you guys had a lot of, with injuries and things like that, a lot of shuffling on the offensive line as one of the few, I mean, you started you know, every game last year as one of the few constants. How much does that affect an offensive lineman when there is so much kind of shuffling on the line? Yeah, it goes back to that gelling that we were talking about earlier. Um, the, the more you've played with a person, the more comfortable you are, the more you're not going to be stepping on each other's toes, the more you're going to fit blocks well because you're just, there's a level of comfort, comfortability so when there's injuries that that it's you have to it's the same thing you have to step up that communication and, and maybe get some extra reps and some certain things so you, you can grow at a at a faster rate when you know injuries are bound to happen it's just it's just the sport we play and and you need to when that happens and when that comes up maybe you take that player aside and uh, post practice a day and you do some extra work but it just is it is what it is and and you just got to work through it. Hey, Matt, uh, Jonathan Alexander with the Charlotte Observer. I hope you're doing well. Um, you know, one player we're going to also talk to is DJ Moore. And, and I'm wondering, what are your thoughts on what he could potentially do um, this season? I know Matt Rule said he wants him to be top wide receiver. So what do you think about what he can do? You know, DJ is a, a phenomenal player, phenomenal person. Um, I'm very excited for this season. Um, I mean, I said earlier, like, I'm not sure what, uh, you know, we've had, like, a couple, a couple practices or walkthroughs with not a ton of plays, but I'm, I'm confident in our offense and, and uh, he'll get the, 
the targets and the receptions. I'm very excited to see what he can do this year. I don't really have an answer for you or a projection, but I think I'm I'm very excited to see him. Yeah, generally, what have you thought about uh, Joe Brady in the offense and the offense that he is bringing in here? I'm I'm very excited, man. We you know we've got weapons. You guys have talked about it. We've got we've got a bunch of offensive weapons and. Um, the O-line, we're going to do our job and give Teddy the time back there, give Christian the, the ball and let him uh, run the rock. And uh, I'm very excited. We're going to be – I'm, I'm very excited and confident in, uh, in our offense for this season. And, Matt, um, as, a, as a late-round pick yourself, and you spent some time on the practice squad, there's no preseason this year, the late – there's no OTAs, no mini camp. Do you feel like – like that's that's really hurting the guys that were maybe in in your position coming into the league and kind of just your thoughts on on their kind of how that affects their journey and how it might have affected yours yeah it's a it's a very difficult position I do not um I feel bad for some of those guys especially the the UDFAs because back when I was back in Idaho I was training with some of those guys from Boise State and it was just like I mean, they're cut, they're cutting roster size, and it's like it's a hard it's a hard situation. No preseason games, you're not going to get the reps. You it, it makes the the practices and the meetings even more paramount to uh, to try to get some to try to impress to be able to make the squad. Um, I think if I remember correctly, I think they've upped the practice squad, so that should um, you know that's going to give some more guys jobs and and more more time to develop as a player but that doesn't I mean there's still a lot of guys are gonna be missing I mean you've all seen it there's dudes that people didn't know their name and then they hit preseason game four and go off and make the team and then turn into great players like so it's hard um looking back on on my rookie season I don't know what would have been different I, I mean yeah it was a it's a long time. It's a long time ago now. It feels like, um, but I feel for those guys because it's not. They're not going to get the uh, the showing that they normally would have in the past. Matt, have you seen the uh, the splash guard for the helmets? And uh, do you plan on trying one out? Is that the one that that goes in, yeah. in front of the face mask? Um, I have seen those. I, I mean, I may try one out. I don't plan on wearing it. Um, I have a hard enough time breathing as it is. <laughs> and uh, I've never worn a visor. I've never really worn a visor either. But guys talk about like it limits your breathing and, and everything. And um, I, don't, I don't plan on wearing one. Matt, to kind of follow up on that, I saw a picture yesterday of Teddy wearing a mask. Um, in practice, how many players are doing that? What's kind of the feeling amongst players on whether you should do that or not? Um, he was wearing the, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think most guys aren't wearing them for practice. Um, let's see. I, I mean, I, I'm going to go, we're, we're doing the testing. We're doing the, uh, yeah, I think absolutely, if guys want to wear them, do it. Like, absolutely. Um, wear that but personally I don't plan on, on wearing one of those um, for practice and I, I don't um, I, I do believe in the protocols that, that the team and the and the NFL has put into place. Hey Matt related question I know you're a baseball guy too uh, what, have you watched much of that and what first of all what do you think about that experience with no fans and then secondly does kind of the outbreaks that the Marlins and Cardinals have had, does that give you any pause? And if so, or if not, uh, why do you think the NFL will be different? Um, yeah, I've, I've watched, especially when opening day and a couple games since then, since we started camp, I haven't been able to watch much, but um, I followed wrong. I follow, I paid attention when the Marlins had the outbreak. I haven't really stayed up to date on the Cardinals, but um you say Cardinals or yeah. Um, I mean, absolutely. It gives you a pause, but they, they're a much different sport in that, like obviously on the field, they're social distancing and, and that that's the very spread out, but they're traveling so much more than we are playing way more games. I feel like 
there's a lot of opportunity for interactions um, away from the field with them and with us you know we would play 16 games it's a big difference yes like we are not a social distance sport but if guys are doing their job throughout the week of, of limiting you know not going out to restaurants or whatever the what the NFL protocols that they've given us I have faith in that we can um, pull this off as we've got a couple more minutes with Matt so you got anything else Hey, Matt, as a veteran player, um, how have you and, and a lot of the other veteran guys reacted or, I guess, taken to Coach Rule's style coming from college and now adjusting um, his style, if he's adjusting it at all, to the pro game? Yeah, I mean, I um, obviously wasn't with him in college, so I can't speak to differences or anything that he is now, but um, I'm enjoying it, him immensely. I, I appreciate the uh, energy and, and the presence that he brings. and. Um, I think we're off to a, to a great start, and, and uh, I'm excited about what he's bringing to the table. Matt, I was wondering for you, being someone who was obviously in the facility last year, kind of, we can't be in there. So what are the changes kind of like, and how comfortable do you feel? And just, you know, when you first walked in, what was it like to see what the facility looks like now? Yeah, it's very different. Um, all the first floors, locker rooms, like even the, our old meeting rooms and such, and um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a change. There's lots, I mean, I could go on and on about all the different changes, but it just kind of is what it is. You know, we've got the contact tracers, um, stay distant from each other and, and pay attention to what you're doing. And, and it's the, it's the reality that we're, that we're living in. And, and, um, I don't know, there's not much to do other than just do it. Matt. We got time for one more for Matt. So. Okay, Matt. Luke Lynn here with WF Martin Greensboro. Appreciate the time. Um, quick question for you. What From the beginning of the pandemic to now, what's something you learned the most, whether it's personally or professionally, what's something you've taken away from uh, March up until this point? I'm not a handyman. I kept trying to do construction projects and stuff around my house and learned real quick that was not – that was not my uh, forte in life. Okay, we're going to give one more to Josh Klein, and then we're going to get Matt out of here. Matt, thank you. Uh, here's Josh's last question. Hey, Matt. Um, I know, uh, obviously, you talked a little bit about Matt Rule, but I was hoping you could talk a little bit about Pat Meyer and um, how he's been as a line coach and what he's asking you to do that might be slightly different than coaches you've had in the past. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, very much enjoying uh, Coach Meyer. Um, it's been it's, it's been weird being virtual. You know, we've met so much and had so many conversations over the phone and virtually, and then but you don't meet a guy for you know, what is that like probably four or five months. And but it's been good to uh, to finally get in the building and meet him and and learn those some of these techniques we're going over. And um, yeah, I mean, there, it's every every coach has their. Um, specific techniques and stuff and um, I think it's it's going to fit us very well at what he teaches and, and I'm very excited about it. Great Matt thanks so much for taking some time good to see you. Yeah uh, absolutely. Thanks Matt. Thank you Matt. Thanks Matt. Yeah. <laughs>
Hi, DJ. You're on with a lot of media. I see. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll kick it over to uh, to questions for DJ. DJ, thanks for being here. Thank you, Brian. Hey, DJ, thanks for taking the time. Um, was wondering, just kind of right off the bat, what are your first initial impressions of, of Teddy Bridgewater and, uh, and, and what he might look like in this Joe Brady offense? Uh, Teddy is a cool dude. Um, right now, I, I feel like everybody just gathering to him. Like, he got a real, like, friendly personality, so it's, like, rubbing off on everybody. So that's the best thing right now. Uh, how you fit in Joe Brady offense? Hey, right now we're still learning it uh, all together. So we're just going to take it one by one day at a time to get better and better. Hey, DJ Skyler here with Sports Illustrated. Uh, last week, Coach Rule said that he was looking forward to you taking that next step in your development, uh, being a physical guy that you can be reliable on third down situations. Uh, does having a guy like Robbie Anderson and even Seth Roberts kind of help you take that next step in that direction to where all the attention is not all on you? Uh, yeah, of course it does. Uh, when you have multiple weapons, uh, from me to Curtis to Robbie to Seth to DeAndre, like I heard the whole list of our room, and even C Mac and uh, the running backs room, it's like it's gonna be crazy. That, uh, that if somebody just hone in on one player, it's gonna be opening up other players for other people. DJ Josh Graham from Sports Up Triad, what do you remember your first impression of Matt Rule being? given you guys have that Philadelphia tie, him being at Temple and you being from Philly? Like, what you mean? Like, like from, way back when, when he tried like to recruit. way back when? To, I just remember him just being as happy as, as he is now, uh, trying to recruit me back then, and he's still as hype right now. Hey, DJ, JB Ricks from uh, Spectrum News. Uh, quick question for you. What's it going to take for you to be a number one wide receiver in the NFL? What's it going to take? You know, hard work and dedication. And then just doing what I have personally want to set up for myself to do. So that's all it is. And we got to win more games to even get people even notice us. From me to, well, C Mac is already known, but you know, he still want to be better. Curtis, Robbie, Teddy, everybody want to make a name for himself. So anything that can help do that. DJ, DJ on the uh, FNC, uh, when you look in the NFC South, and you guys have you guys have some pretty good wide receivers there. And last year, I remember you, you know you said that you know you felt you deserved to make the Pro Bowl. Does that kind of give you a chip on your shoulder that hey, I want to you know I'm one of these top receivers as well? Uh, whenever you don't make something, it always gives you a chip. Uh, even with like I think two years, not last year, Curtis made the Pro Bowl. Yeah, he made the year before. I mean, not Curtis, uh, C Mac, uh, made the pro, pro Bowl, didn't make the Pro Bowl. So when I seen that, he had a big chip and he said, went out and did his thing. So, of course, there's always going to be a chip when you don't make something that you think you should make. So it's just going to make you go harder for the next year. Hey, what's up, DJ? This is Jonathan Alexander uh, with the Charlotte Observer. Um, I'm wondering, do you think uh, players have, you know, looked at the situation with, uh, I guess the Miami Marlins and kind of use that as a cautionary tale uh, of what they shouldn't do? Uh, I think so. Um, that whole team, I think, was positive, but I'm not really sure. I just heard around the locker room. But uh, I feel safe around this whole stadium environment. Like, everybody should feel safe from the testing part to the different tiers. It's all safe right now, so we're just going to keep doing what we're doing and Hey, keep social distancing. DJ, was there something in particular that you wanted to work on or that you wanted to improve over the course of the offseason, and how did you go about doing it? The offseason was really difficult this year, uh, you know, because of COVID. So some of the things it had to do in the backyard, but I think I focused on probably everything because every little detail in my game had to be enhanced to another notch. So probably everything. DJ, DJ, Hayes. <laughs> DJ Hayes, Steve Reed from the uh, Associated Press. Hey, um, I just want to run this quote by you from Matt Rule. He was talking about you the other day and how much he was looking forward to seeing you and Curtis Samuel play together. He said, I think DJ has got to take another step this year 
and go be that dominant physical go-to receiver on third and five you're going to the red zone and that you're going to go to and and taking that matchup of the team's best corner and just dominate it so that's the step he has to take what are your thoughts on on what he said in in that challenge ahead uh, i think he's just challenging me to be the best player i can be on the field uh I'm going to accept that challenge and just run with it. Like, I'm just trying to be the best me, best receiver on the field uh, that, that I can be for the team and help get the win. How do you feel you and Curtis Samuel are different kinds of receivers other than the fact you guys work really well in the slot, explosive, big play guys? How do you think you're different? Uh, I, won't, I don't really know. We all, we all got uh, different personalities in the room, from me to Curtis to Robbie. Like, you got three speed guys, probably the slowest side of the three, but, you know, uh, those two, they, they they could take it to the house at any any time. I can, too. But uh, we all just got different skill sets. Like, we, we know how to hone in on them and when to use them. DJ, did Coach Rule have a similar conversation with you, like, with those similar thoughts that he had and shared with you? That he shared with you guys, yeah. He um, he told me that he just wanted me to be the best player that he's seen me growing up uh, from from recruitment high school to now. It's just like just continue being you, but take it to the next level uh, every year, so to get better and better every year. DJ, it's Sheena here. Um, hope everything is well. You had a, a busy off season. This is the fir your first off season as a father. How did you kind of balance that with you know the complexities of COVID? Uh, everybody just stay home. We didn't even leave Charlotte um, at all. Like my house didn't leave Charlotte. We just stayed in the house and uh, I worked out in the garage or in the backyard. That was that's how we uh, handled that situation. DJ, I was wondering for you when you, you know, you're learning Joe Brady's offense and kind of this new scheme that you're going to be doing, what are you excited about for your role and what you're going to be doing this season? Uh, it's only day two right now, so uh, the whole offense is excited to see what it can do. Like, as a group, we're just excited to see who's going to make different plays and what on what play, what down. Like, it's just something that we're learning. And, uh, now, like, the two days, I would say it's going to be nice. I guess more like what were your and what were your first impressions of like working with Joe Brady and what you guys have done so far? Uh, Joe you know, Brady's he pretty cool. Uh, he get rowdy when need be, but he's pretty cool. Uh, he knows what he wants to see through, uh, as us as an offense. Uh, so we got to make that dream come true. DJ, what was working out in the backyard in the garage like? I mean, did you have to get creative? Did you have to get more stuff as time went on? What did you have to work with? I guess. Uh, I had to get more stuff as time went on. Uh, I was able to sprint uh, out back. I was able to run routes, uh, lift. So I was able to do almost the normal things, but it was just at home and it just wasn't the normal, but it was kind of normal. So. You have to backyard to do 40s? Let's, huh? let's, let's go with Joe and then David. We got a couple more minutes. Joe, then David. It's, do you have a big enough backyard that you could like uh, pace out forty yards? Uh, no, I don't. I don't have that. Big, I don't have that big of a backyard. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, what have you seen different in Christian arriving here that did you maybe didn't see before in past years? Uh, from Christian, uh, I just see the normal Christian uh, every year. Every year, he just brings something new. Uh, whether it's just a new running technique or like a new build to him, like he just looks different every year. As, as far as there's 99 rating in Madden, I know that's a couple of years in a row now. What uh, you guys talk about that kind of thing or? Nah, we don't really discuss it. We 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 joke about it with him, but he don't really discuss it. Okay, one or two more. Oh, sorry, Ryan. Okay, one or two more. Go ahead, Ashley. Appreciate it. DJ Ashton Mahoney at the Charlotte Post, appreciate your time this afternoon. And Teddy was talking about yesterday how he was able to put together about you know, three or so days worth of work for guys because there wasn't really that opportunity to have, you know, a typical OTA mini camp, et cetera. Were you able to attend that? And if so, what did that entail and what was that like? Uh, you're talking about before we got here? Uh, yeah, I got to uh, 
uh, throw with Teddy. Uh, a few of us did. Um, it was pretty, pretty much how it is now, but at a different speed, so we could get the timing down that he wanted, know the verbiage that he's going to use out there on the field. DJ, does it help him as help you kind of like you guys as pass catchers and the rest of your offense to view him as a leader when he's pulling you all together, um, kind of outside the facility to to have that time together? Oh yeah, you look at somebody like that as a leader because he went out his way to get that going, and uh, him and Will did a real good job of that. Everybody good. Great. DJ, thanks so much, guys. Appreciate you being here. Thanks, DJ. Thank you. Thanks.